So I took and stole a gold medal winning Mazer Cup mead recipe and made it for myself. Let's get started. This recipe I made today, I made, I stole, is from Nathan Zangmeister, who was someone who submitted his mead to our, our competition, Mead Stampede, our mead competition, and to the Mazer Cup, and to a multitude of other mead competitions, and won a ton of awards. Like, this dude came in and clean swept the, the place, and it was awesome. And so, I wanted to make his mead and so that's what i did um i contacted nathan we had a great time and uh we noticed something about us um and i don't know if you can see but there's something weird going on but anyways um i got his recipe from him his process exactly how he made this mead and i made it so here's what i did i have it in front of me at the end of this video you're gonna see him and i taste testing and um it, the goal of this video was free for me to make his mead recipe, but then also make it my way, which is a small difference. It is a black locust traditional mead. So black locust honey. So I contacted him, I said, hey, I need some black locust honey because I don't know where to get it. Also, I'd like to try and use what you used. So he sent me a bunch of honey and I made these recipes on the screen. Um, there are two versions. There's my version and there's his version. Now, what I mean by my version is I did a little bit different process with mine. So his process included, um, was basically honey and water, yeast, and then let it go through the primary, after the primary, top it off with water, which I know some of you are gonna cringe at. I did too, not gonna lie, initially, and let it set for forever. He didn't include nutrients, um, so I wanted to flip it and see what happens if you include nutrients. So I made my version, same recipe. I put Fermade O in it to add some yeast nutrition. I also topped mine off with water and did some things. So that's the only difference you see in those recipes was the nutrient addition. I went ahead and started the fermentations on both of them, mixed all the stuff up, and they went through the primary. I did include my Fermade O in my version. Um, they came out of the primary. I, by the way, I did start them at the same gravity, so it is totally fair. There's nothing weird happening with that. Um, outside of the primary, I decided to let them sit for a little bit. I then said, well, well I topped them off with water to follow what he did, and um, there was a really cool, I want to show a clip of this because it was super cool. Coming out of the primary, mine finished a little faster because it had nutrients, not really surprising, but it finished faster, it kind of cleared up more. And whenever I was topping mine off with water, there was a really cool like, kind of like oil slick effect is just like the, the alcohol and the water mixing. And that's kind of where you get, I mean, this really, it looks really cool. I'm showing, show you some stuff on screen anyways. Side note, went ahead and made his, um, went ahead and moved his over as well. I cold crashed them both because I wanted to try and clear his up faster. I cold, cla cold crashed both of them to make it as fair as possible. So I didn't want to just cold crash his because I don't believe that any flavor will be changed through cold crashing, but for whatever reason, for those YouTube comment trolls in here that are gonna yell at me, I went ahead for you people down there about to type the comment, went ahead and cold crashed both of them. So, cold crashed both. Mm, I didn't really see a lot of clarity change in his, and so I pulled it back out, um, racked it one more time, and then I actually tried to cold crash one more time. And I'm kinda at the point with this where I am I could theoretically make this video be a, a two year process like Nathan's mead was. It, he let it set for two and a half years, but that doesn't really make sense for me to wait that long for this video. And I'm so sorry that I don't want to spend two and a half years of my life on just one video right here. So I am going to send off bottles to him to taste test. And there is a slight clarity difference between them. So, so sorry, but we're gonna go ahead now and jump to the tasting and see what he notices between the two and ultimately decide 
which one we like more between the two. So let's hop on over to my great chat and tasting with Nathan Zangmeister. Here we are for the tasting. We are going to taste three meads today, not just two. And I have three. the man himself who has created this mead on the Zoom call. Nathan, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for uh, letting me recreate your mead. Yeah, no, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So um, we have, like I said, three of them here. And I, I tried, I wanted to conceal, I was going to try to conceal which one was my version versus yours. Uh -huh. But I decided not to go that route, mostly because at the time that I had sent these to you, there was a very obvious clarity difference. And we had already kind of discussed which one was which. And so I was right. like, there's no way I could get away with like you're gonna know. So, anyways, I you have blindfolded myself. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> so, uh, so you got him here. I say we just go ahead and, and pour them, and then cool. um, we kind of talk about it. So, I've got a little bit of my original one left too. So, oh, I don't know if you, if you have. Oh yeah, I got I got your bottle. So okay, cool. This is probably what I'm most excited for. Mine, I'm like, okay, oh, you haven't even fine. opened it yet. I haven't opened yours. No. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I right yeah, right. I've I've left it for this moment in history. So excellent. <laughs> What uh, what are we starting with? Um, let's do let's start with with yours. I vote okay. so we have the the basis of what we're searching for. I'm gonna so, go ahead and pour them all right now. That way they can oxygenate a little bit. Me too. Me too. And so, yours, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's talk about your uh, your uh, cold chilling. Oh yeah, this was cold <laughs> crashed. So well, the fun part about that is this was cold crashed. Um, purposefully <laughs> for for trying to clarify um and i i evenly cold crashed them and all those things and then in the in the time i was sending it to you i guess it was also freezing there because it was yeah. it was freezing here as well and um well it, they they got another cold crash in yeah <laughs> so they uh one I, I can't remember exactly but i remember they came like this so the corks had pushed out because the, the freezing expanded it. Uh -huh. And I think, I, I think one of them was completely out. Yeah, I've it, never seen the photo. it just froze. <laughs> yeah. I was glad I sent, I, t sent multiple bottles. Uh, my hope was to send, you know, uh, two wine bottles and then two mm -hmm. smaller bottles so that, like, if you wanted to, if we wanted to let them sit for a long time and, like, revisit this down the line. But obviously, sometimes um, nature has its way of stopping right. us. I saved the the uh, twelve ounce beer bottles, so those Sweet. ones were those ones seemed fine. So because they were okay. capped, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so I um, I obviously one note about these is that we're gonna have a little bit of difference in water chemistry because there's you sent me the honey like I got right. from the specific people that you got yours. So uh -huh. I think there's gonna be a little bit of water difference, but that was not possible to avoid i did use right. the same process you did and the same yeast and i mean everything pretty much except for water so water, yeah. that'll be interesting so i have a i've got yours right here i say we go ahead and your original let's let's taste it let's uh Cheers. take it back oh man yeah this is bring me back to mead stampede really? tasting this thing Yo, this thing is fantastic. Cool. Thank you, man. There's just so much um, difficulty that comes with a, a dry traditional. And this mm -hmm. one, what's so interesting is it is dry, but it doesn't have this, like, uh, I mean, it's still got the sweetness that is presented there. And a lot of it's that floral notes. This honey is just really nice. Yeah, I, I do like that honey. I am actually just bought uh, 10... 10 more gallons off of them. Oh, oh man. Yeah. yeah. So get ready to make a it's bunch super more. good. And this is, Thank so you. the other thing that we can't obviously change or add to this is the time difference. So, right. You know, I wish that I wish that we can magically snap our fingers and say like, it's now three years old, you know, because yeah. yours, this original batch that I'm attempting to recreate here is from December 1st, 2019. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's got some age on it for sure. I think that really helped it. Um, you know, as with as it does with most wines and meads. Yeah. It it smoothens things out and kind of mm -hmm. it just gives time for the the 
I won't say flaws, but hardships the yeast go through to chill out. Mine right. is from October 2021. So, I mean, we're so tell me tell months. me more about tell me more about how you did it. So you did pretty much the same recipe. Did you you did you let it sit in primary for how long? Oh, uh, primary was like yeah, it was probably about a month. Okay. Um, the only difference between ours really is I used um, some Fermate O in oh, okay. the original batch. And then on yours, I didn't use any because I was following your, your base right. idea. So that's the only difference. And then they both sat in primary um, with the Fermate O. It did finish a little bit. My version finished a little bit earlier than, than yours. And I keep right. calling them mine versus yours just for later. Yeah, I know what you mean. But, yeah. um, and then from there on, it was all the same. I just let okay. them let them set, cold crash them together. You know, everything that happened to them was unified. I, of course, um, I topped it off with water in that secondary because that's what you'd done right. with this one. So I tried to follow your your exact everything you did. Cool, cool. Well, let's right, give so yours a, give yours a try. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. My version. So this okay. one had Framade O included in it. Okay. And mine went way drier than yours. It sure did, yeah. It's still good though. It's very, yeah, definitely it's very drier. different. What's so crazy about your? Did yours go absolutely dry? Like one point zero zero? No, well, yours got a final gravity of one point zero two zero, according to this. Yeah, I think on the last video, I I thought it had gone dry, and then when I went back and looked, it it didn't look like it had. Ah, so. And like I said, I took notes, but I don't know what happened to them. So I think well, I lost it. Because there is sweetness here. So maybe I was wrong. So if it did, I, you obviously did not it, add, you did not add. No. Anything. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't back sweeten anything. So it must not have gone completely dry. There um, is sweetness here that is nice. Right. Yeah, I think it is, balances better. But this is like, cool, like, um, it is so dry. My version with Fermi dough, it is so mm -hmm. dry that you like you still get the essence of the honey but it right um sweetness is nice i mean that's the only way to put it a little sweetness helps i think you let the sage though i think that's gonna balance and mellow a little bit i think that'll uh -huh. be really nice real tasty it's like a really good tastes more wine like to me than honey like, yeah i do wish you know i think one thing that would help help this one specifically with it being so dry would be uh, you know, honey, but that's not going to happen. Uh, mm. It would be some, maybe some, uh, a smidge of like acid, just a small amount of acid to help brighten it up some. Okay. That's very, I, haven't very... Really done, I haven't really done a whole lot with acid adjustments yet. I, I bought some, but I just haven't dipped my toe into the, into that realm. Yeah. What, it, what, what acid would you recommend? So I'll probably go with malic or tartaric. Um, uh -huh because citric acid would be too bright. It would just over brighten. Malic mm. acid is the in between like uh, grapes. Tartaric acid is like that realm. It's like, I'm not going to say warm acid, but more mellow mm. acid. And then that malic is kind of the stair stepper. Um, and so something like that, even just a smidge yeah. would be interesting to see. In fact, right. in a moment, once we get through these, I might, I might try that. I might just, Put a couple pinches of malic in. Yeah, I'll go my, grab my, my version at least and see. I'll if grab it, my acid. You grab yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch to uh, to your version now that I recreated. Okay. So again, the, the only difference made, yeah. here is that um, that this did not have any nutrients in it, and there is a, a little bit of a clarity difference. A little bit, not not a whole lot. I mean, I didn't pour a big glass, but yeah, yours your version looks a little bit more crystal clear. And maybe the, the extra cold crashing on your end and the shipping view <laughs> yeah. helped it out. <laughs> yeah. Thanks uh, FedEx or whoever you used. What do you think about this one? Hmm. There's a re little residual sweetness in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it did go dry. Like actually dry 1.0. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'll go back and forth. Yeah, I can kind of tell they're both the same base for the most part, but this one has has something to it that makes it a little more palatable or mellow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
What do you think? Yeah, oh, I agree. So um, with the only difference being the Fermate O, I do think that um, because the yeast were healthier and, and able to, I mean, they just had a little more firepower behind them. They were able right. in, in my version to kick through everything. Yeah. And be, with having no nutrients at all, I do think that the yeast were still able to go to the end, but they had a little more of a tussle and, you know, and, and it, I won't, I'm not going to say struggled, but it meant that they went slower for one. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes that slow fermentation can yield different results. I do find the resi- the residual sweetness here. And I like it actually. Um, because I do too. It, like, especially having your original, original one, it going so dry uh, kind of pulls a lot of the nice flavors from this honey. The honey itself is really, really great. Yeah. And I, I wish I had, um, I, I could even, I might even be able to do that a second. Like before I, I go mess it up, I might grab another glass. I have still like a pinch of that honey. See if I add just a little bit of honey to, to oh, yeah. it out on each end, but that's a good idea. The little bit of sweetness from your version is nice. It adds <laughs> some of that life back. Yeah. It gives it a little more character that, I think the completely dry ones lose a little bit. It kind of detracts from what that, like you said, the honey characteristics that, that uh, mm-hmm. make it really nice. And uh, I, I don't think it's, it's not bad that it's dry, but a dry traditional mead, like truly dry is so tough. I mean, you, yeah. people, people will spend their whole life searching for that one, you know, perfect dry traditional mead. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's hard because you're relying on yeast. You're relying on everything. Like you, you just are putting your hands in and saying yeast, do your thing. Don't mess up. And that's hard because sometimes they, uh, they get finicky. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, kind of on that note, I'm going to, my next experiment, big experiment. Cause I think I've showed you the, the 13, um, got one gallon, traditionals that i'm trying to do with different yeasts uh-huh. i i i landed a like a killer deal on like over 50 or 60 one gallon carboys Ooh. got them for dirt cheap so i'm gonna do like a huge run of different yeasts and oh man and uh i'll probably use fermato on this one yeah. just because i don't feel like waiting a year for it to that that is the one thing with so like we always talk about um yeast nutrient and like trying to of course take care of your yeast and um, I know I will always be a proponent of that for everybody because I think that it's a it's a better safeguard because um, sometimes it works out and it, that you make a mead you know like this that that doesn't use fermato right. or nutrient necessarily and it turns out great and I think it is very very possible and sometimes it can be it can be a different story and it all depends mm-hmm. on kind of situation to situation and you're just really having that extra safeguard can ensure that you are actually giving a clean fermentation. It's like a seat belt, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I think you get more consistent and reliable results when you're using all the proper nutrient additions and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if I were, if I were picking one to, between the two that I created mm-hmm. and now having tested yours, your original, I definitely think that even even with the the lack of time on it the the version that used no fermate o is is better because it's left some residual sweetness now i do want to put one little theory to the test i'm going to go grab that jug of honey real fast and and i'm going to put just a drop or two of honey into each one and see if i can counterbalance out so give me one sounds good actual yeast shootouts i think those are the first yeast shootouts i've seen anybody I came across anyway. And when I saw those, I was like, ah, that'd be a great way to compare things. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Does that work okay. out? So I've, I have taken for anyone who has missed anything, I have taken a small amount of the original honey added about, I don't know how much of a spoonful, just enough of a spoonful to each glass. And I don't have a gravity reading. I'm not going to go take a gravity reading of this right, <laughs> right now. But I will say, hold on, I got I got to go back to the original for a second. Mm-hmm. I tried to put the same amount of honey in to both of them. Yeah. So yours, your your version is right here in my right hand. This is my version. Okay. 
because there was residual sweetness in yours, um, adding more sweetness to it has made it not exactly like this. Obviously time is, I mean, time is very friendly to this guy and just, I mean, wrapped it up in a blanket. So this thing is super uh -huh. smooth. Your original, this one does have a closer root to the original being, being your version. My version's close, but again, it lacks a little sweetness and that's because uh -huh. I'll probably have to make up for even more sweetness because of the Fermate O. But right. I do see, I can see how aging these things, with some sweetness for a long time would could could be close to what you've done here yeah. so i think that was the key uh, that was probably what probably what i missed now that, a little that, touch of honey there that doesn't fix the um process for me so if uh -huh. i were trying to recreate yours exactly in order for me to have done that i would have had to have started with more honey and capped out the yeast because you you mm -hmm. didn't use sorbates or I actually used I think I might, on some of them I did, some of them I didn't. Yeah, I see if, uh, yeah. 0.15 grams of sorbate. So you did add sorbate, but you didn't back sweeten is what Correct. I'm getting to. So Correct. without back sweetening, you have to cap out the yeast. You have to play the game. So right. I would have had to cap out the yeast and or at this point when I'd sent them to you, stabilize and back right. sweeten. And I was trying to follow suit with what you had done. So... Uh -huh. This is interesting, though. I really, I really wish now I had um, on my other bottles back sweetened because this, I, I think the dryness of it will be good over time, but it is way more enjoyable, a little sweet. I think, and the longer I let it sit, the more that alcohol bite wears off mm -hmm. of, of the front, and it, I get a little bit more of the honey character on on yours. That, uh, that's nice. This has been a lot of fun though. And I, I want to say that like, the, so kind of hearkening back to the beginning of this, this whole thing, this was the first mead you had ever made, right? Yeah. So for anybody listening, who's like just getting started, you do not have to be a, um, a veteran mead maker to go and win awards. And I've already talked about this in the beginning of this video, but Nathan has won literal numerous awards from big competitions with this mead right here. All it takes is, uh, especially now with YouTube things, just a little bit of research and then yeah. doing it. Getting high quality yeah. honey is probably your first choice. You know, I would, not, yeah. I would not say that you're gonna fool a judge with the pure and simple Walmart brand honey. Um, you're probably going to have to get something that's a little bit nicer because most yeah. me judges have a little, it, it should, I believe, have a little bit of uh, awareness of that. But you need to start with nice quality ingredients and then you just got to make some stuff. And obviously, uh, you know, taking a me to make it for your first time and then going and winning awards is the ideal, like what everybody wants. And I think everybody can do it as long as you are patient and you try. That's, yeah, that's the start of it. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's pretty much how I started. I was watching you and BC and a few other channels here and there. You guys were the main ones, and and I'd made wine from a kit like probably ten plus years ago. So I kind of understood the basics, but uh -huh. you know, I, I watched hours and hours of videos of you guys and my girlfriend and I decided, yeah, let's just buy some actually good honey, spend some money and see what happens. And yeah, like you said, you don't have to be a professional to make good quality products. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you're right. You could, you can use, you know, arguably cheaper ingredients from any big box store, but you're going to get what you pay for. If you, if you put up a little bit of money and get some good quality ingredients, you're going to get a really nice product out of it. Yeah, you can always, and, and on that note, my, my big thing I always try to tell people is you can always put more in, and this goes for anything, for any ingredients, for acids, for oak, for stuff, you can't take stuff out. So as yeah. you're creating your brew, keep that in mind, you know, don't start chunking like everything in, under the sun in, because right. you, know, you, know, you might be disappointed. Kind of yeah. add a little, and then add more if necessary. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Right well, Nathan, thank you for sharing your, your I mean, literally award-winning mead with me. And I, I have felt uh, very honored to get to try and make it. And this has been a lot of fun. Um, 
I, I don't know that I have come close to what you did and I, I wish I no, had. I, th- <laughs> I, th- I think it's honestly, I think it's, it's, it's pretty close. Uh, I think the sweetness, like you mentioned, um, having that a little bit of residual sweetness, even though it's kind of technically a dry mead, you know, there's yeah. a little, a little something there to help give the character. But I think what you've done is really good. They're both really good. Um, different, different characters a little bit, you know, the, with my version, it's a little sweeter. Uh-huh. Yours is definitely really dry, but I don't know. I, I, I think you did really well. Yeah. Tastes great. Tastes if really you clean. have a any of that honey left, I want you to take a spoonful at some Don't. point while it's <laughs> and literally just put a little bit of honey in, in, in each one and then yeah. and then tell me what you think. Because I do think for me that has changed these drastically. Oh, I and, believe you. Yeah. I, I unfortunately I just used the last oh, of it, no. like, <laughs> the other day. What did I use it in? I've got like twelve different meads going right now. I can't remember which I used it, in. but yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for my guy to get me another batch. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah. But okay, well, Nathan, thank you for your time and thank you for creating a amazing mead. Um, obviously, I- I've had your other meads. I have I have two more of them sitting just a few feet from me, and I've been kind of cool. savoring them as as I go through because they they've all been really good. And I don't excellent. I want to make sure and and enjoy them well and not just. <laughs> Found them back, even though. Hey, feel free. To, they're they're yours. You do what you want with them. <laughs> so, uh, if you would like to do anything with this channel, I mean, there's all these links and things. Um, you're gonna see Nathan in a future video. Uh, we've got some fun stuff planned, and so I I I know you will see him again. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll we'll chat again. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>